The Texas property tax bill was voted on, approved, and now more than 2 million homeowners will own no school taxes whatsoever. Lots of other exciting changes in this law, so let's get to it. Well, hello, hello, I'm Wendy Pinnell, and as I'm sure many of you are very excited to hear, the property tax bill was passed. Let's talk about all of the changes we're going to begin to see. Well, first, the cut is effective retroactively for all of 2023. Some people's school property taxes could even be reduced to zero. Now, before you get too excited, Notice that I said school taxes, okay? So let me explain the difference. Remember how property taxes are a formula of county, city, school, and sometimes college and hospital taxes? Well, the school portion is always your largest amount of that formula. In fact, let's take a look at an example, okay? Let's just say you live in Salina and your property value is 400,000. Since you live in your home, you also have the homestead exemption. Well, the tax estimator shows us that your county taxes would be $567.50, your city taxes would be $24.48.62, your Salina school tax would be $37.14.30, and your college tax would be $259.90. As you can see, school taxes being reduced to zero would be a very big deal, and it's affecting a whole lot of people. The author of the bill, Senator Betancourt, originally wrote that the bill would increase Texas homestead exemption to 100,000 on 5.72 million Texas homeowners. Of those 5.72 million, want to know how many homeowners could have their school taxes reduced to zero? Well, Jason Wheeler said the following. He said, Betancourt's office estimates there are more than 2 million Texas homeowners with the over 65 or disabled exemption. And that's a significant number of them will see their ISD tax bill drop to zero or very close to zero. So to answer your question, it sounds like of the 5.72 million homeowners affected, more than 2 million will see their school taxes drop to zero. I can hear you asking though, Wendy, how is that even possible? That's a whole lot of money for the government to stop getting. Well, I'm glad you asked, okay? Because what really comes into play here is what we call the ceiling. Wheeler explains it like this. If you have a homestead, when you turn 65, or if you become disabled, you can get some bigger property tax exemptions. But more importantly, you hit the ceiling. That is the amount you pay in school property taxes in the year that you turn 65 or become disabled. Now listen up, okay, because here's where it gets good. In future years, as long as you don't significantly improve your home, your school tax won't go above the ceiling even if a hot real estate market raises your home's value tremendously. Wheeler gives an example of a homeowner who turned 65 a decade ago. At that time, their house was valued at around 109,000 and their new tax ceiling was 1245. All these years, they've been paying 1245 in school taxes and it hasn't changed. Well, guess what? With our new tax law, their school tax ceiling will be $247. And that's the ceiling. The school tax amount will literally never go up from there for them. And like we saw earlier, according to Betancourt, more than 2 million homeowners will see their school tax be that low or even lower. Now, this is an important tip. If you're relocating to Dallas and you're looking at pre-owned homes, you need to watch out for this. We have known many families who purchased a home where the seller was over 65 and they were like really happy with the estimated property tax amount when they saw that for the home. But here's the deal. You need to know that is not necessarily your tax amount. That amount is based on the current owners with their exemptions. I mean, that amount could have been the same since 1990. Okay, your amount is gonna change in a huge way when you buy the home. Always do your homework on projected property taxes so you don't get blindsided when that first bill comes in. Okay, so what else happens now? Well, if the bill was just passed, but it's retroactive, many of you are probably wondering about the tax bill that just showed up in your mailbox. Well, your tax bill will more than likely be correct, already reflecting the reduced amount. Cora Neese explains it this way. Article six requires tax assessors to prepare this year's taxes as though voters had approved the constitutional amendment. This means your property tax bill on October 1 will be a provisional tax bill. Now, here's how you can know. Your tax bill should have included the following verbiage. Because of action by the Texas legislature, your tax bill has been lowered by blank amount, resulting in a lower tax bill of blank amount. 
contingent on the approval by the voters at an election to be held November 7, 2023. Now, this is the exact verbiage from Article 6 of the proposition. And I can tell you right now, we got our property tax bill and that was on there. So even though your tax bill is probably accurate, the escrow account with your mortgage company is not going to be. I mean, you have probably overpaid this entire year. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means you probably have an escrow surplus, okay? And that is fantastic news. Secondly, you need to have your monthly payment reduced. Okay, so how, how do you go about doing this? Well, you're gonna have to call your mortgage company and request an escrow review, okay? First, they're gonna review what went in and what was paid out, and then they're gonna cut you a check for the surplus and reduce your monthly payment. Okay, so how much will that be? Well, it could be a pretty good chunk of change. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said the new compromise will see Texas homeowners paying $1,200 to $1,450 less in property taxes than they did previously. All right, so not bad. Your average homeowner's looking to save between $1,200 to $1,400 a year with the new tax bill. Now this is important, so everybody listen up, okay? If your home's value went up in 2023, you may not have a surplus, but you will have less of a shortage or maybe like just it averages out, you don't have any, you know, everything at all. But either way, an escrow review only takes one phone call and it's a wise move to make. So make the call, but don't book your vacation just yet, okay? <laughs> It'll generally take about a few weeks for them to complete the review. For those who haven't received your bill yet, you're probably wondering how much you'll save on property taxes. Well, lucky for you, CBS News provided a property tax savings calculator. I'll include the link in the description section, but basically you enter your home's value, your school district, and it tells you how much you'll save. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for example, if your home is worth 800,000, and you're in the Prosper School District, your savings will be 1547. Now, before you go taking that number to the bank, okay, CBS was sure to remind us that this is a calculation that only takes into account the homestead exemption and school tax compression. You may apply for other exemptions as well. So thank you CBS News for doing us a solid. And again, I'll leave that link in the description section. Okay, I know we've been all good news so far, but there is one unwelcome thing that could potentially happen in Dallas with this new bill. Uh, all right, so picture this. You're thinking about making the big move to Dallas. And the first thing on your mind is getting that mortgage, right? Well, here's the deal. You're not gonna sit there and crunch the numbers on how much you'll save with lower property taxes. You're not even gonna think about that. What you're gonna focus on is the magic number your lender gives you as a pre-approval amount. So what exactly goes into that pre-approval amount? Well, it's a mix of things. They're gonna look at how much you'll pay for your mortgage, which includes you know, the, the principal plus the interest. And then they're also looking at the cost of home insurance, property taxes, and maybe even some mortgage insurance. So, so let's just say, you know, your lender crunches those numbers and tells you that you're good for like say 900,000. Well, before those property tax savings came into play, you know, I might've been more like 850,000. But hey, you're new to Texas, so you're not really making that distinction. Here's the scoop. When property taxes drop, your buying power goes up. Lower taxes mean you can swing a bigger mortgage. And guess what, okay, it's not just you. Everyone moving to Dallas suddenly has more cash to play with. The bottom line here is that most folks base their spending on what the lender says they can handle rather than the actual debt amount, okay? Because of all of the money they don't even know they're saving, buyers will have increased buying power that could drive home values up. Now that certainly won't be welcomed in Dallas when we already have an affordability problem. We just don't need prices going up anymore. Looking forward into next year, if any of you watching out there own rentals or are interested in purchasing rental properties in Dallas, a taxable value cap was put in place for non-homesteaded properties. Now this can make a big difference for your taxes. You see, it used to be that with rentals, your property taxes could double or they could even triple from one year to the next because there was like no limit to how much the appraisers could raise the taxable value. Well, now the Texas House's proposal on property tax cuts would lower the state's cap on how much a home's assessed value can rise each year. In a nutshell, it will protect non-homestead properties from increases greater than 20% in market value. But don't get too excited, all right? Because this is just short term, it's not promised over the long haul. While a little protection in the investment realm sounds great, 
There are those who oppose it. The Texas Tribune discusses the new appraisal cap and those opposing it. Tax experts and critics of the proposal from across the political spectrum warn us that placing a hard limit on how much appraisals can grow would create vast inequities between taxpayers, accelerate housing costs, and disproportionately benefit wealthy. It turns out that they're not alone in their opposition either. The Tribune continues, even interest groups that represent the kind of businesses the cap is intended to benefit, including the Texas Association of Business and the Texas Association of Manufacturers, have come out against it, arguing that the proposal would create an uneven playing field that would benefit longtime business owners over new ones. So while these new tax bills are ultimately plans to give relief to the business owners, not everyone is sure that the relief will be worth it in the end. Speaking of rentals and relief, I'm sure many renters out there are wondering if any of those benefits will affect renters. Well, CBS said they believe renters could save money if landlords passed along some of the savings in property taxes they receive. It continues, Speaker Dade Phelan told CBS News Texas that if property taxes are lower, developers may build more apartment complexes, increasing competition, and perhaps lowering rent. Okay, so we've said a whole lot of the good, the bad, and the ugly about what's happening, but now we should also talk about what will not be happening with the new tax bill. First and foremost, school funding is not being cut. All right, many are asking with the property taxes being cut, will that mean that the schools receive less funding? And the answer is no. The state of Texas has a huge budget surplus and they've allocated funds from that surplus to make up the shortage. Now, after hearing that, many have begun wondering, well, what's gonna happen when the surplus runs out? You know, will funding be cut to schools then? And these are understandable things to be concerned about. If you're asking these questions, you're not the only one. Courtney David explains, some observers of the bill wonder about its sustainability with billions of dollars in yearly property tax relief enshrined in the Constitution. Ray Perryman points out the homestead exemption is expected to cost the state $5.6 billion every two years. He continues, the amendment's benefit to lower income homeowners is a good step forward, but he worries about its sustainability in budget cycles when the state doesn't have all that extra cash. He said he doubts the legislature and local taxpayers would approve tax rate hikes, but he fears schools may lose funding if Texas experiences a budget crunch. Luckily though, the state seems to have thought of all of this, okay? Courtney David explains that the legislature has formed a committee to study sustainable property tax relief. She said the cost to the state of the amendment is permanent and will reoccur regardless of the budget cycle. So the committee will look at tax policy and creative means of sustainability. So just wanting to make sure you caught that, okay? Regardless of whether the state has a budget surplus or not, the expense, the cost to the state is permanent, okay? This is officially a line item on their accounts payable. So going forward, they will always be responsible for this expense whether they have a surplus or not, okay? Now, it's this committee's job to figure out how they're gonna handle that. This is important because there's actually a large group of people who were opposed to the property tax cuts on the grounds that Texas should be using the surplus to increase school funding. The argument goes that we should all be paying the same amount in property taxes, plus have the state kick in as well. The way school taxes work is your wealthier cities have more revenue to work with and thus more to invest in their schools. And there is an inequity there that a lot of people are unhappy with. Also, Texas is quite a bit low in teacher salary compared to many other states. In fact, a recent news article states that new data show teacher salaries in Texas are more than 7,700 lower than the national average. In fact, Becky Pringle points out that if we look at this year versus 2008, we see that adjusting for inflation, 
the average starting salary really is 5,000 less in terms of earning power than it was in 2008. So 7,700 less than the national average, and even that amount is 5,000 less in spending power than it was in 2008. Ovidia Molina comments on the dilemma saying, we continue to go in the wrong direction as a state in how to show our educators that we respect the profession, that we value the work that they do for the future of Texas. Many Texans are simply convinced that this property tax bill is going to end up with teachers not making as much money. It doesn't matter how much you explain it to them, okay? They are convinced that one way or another, the school budget will be cut. Now, personally, what I think would be interesting is if the state collected the school taxes instead of the county and administered the funds equally to all school districts, like maybe per capita or something like that. Now, I think that's been proposed before, but it was shut down real fast by the wealthier counties. Uh, the way they see it, if they're paying more for the property taxes, then they want more revenue for their schools. But that does put us in this repetitive cycle of the wealthier cities having the higher rated schools. And these are good questions to consider because schools are a big deal to families and rightfully so. In fact, if you're new to the scene and you're wondering how to find the best schools in Dallas, I made a whole video about it that you can watch right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.